How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at volumes of gases and chemical reactions. So our objective will be to apply the ideal gas law equation to solve for stoichiometric analysis. So basically, if they give us grams or moles or pressure volume temperature information of a reactant, can we then get grams, moles, or pressure volume temperature information about the product, right? So stoichiometry, but we're working with gases. So a little review of stoichiometry. So the balanced chemical equation shows the mole relationship between compounds in a chemical reaction. So if I had this balanced chemical equation, the two NaN3, the two is representing the moles. So if I use two moles of NaN3, I can make two moles of sodium solid, as well as three moles of nitrogen gas. It's not grams, it's not any of that, it's moles. So whenever we're doing a comparison between two things, we have to get moles. So basically you have like these ratios, two moles of NaN3 to two moles of Na solid to three moles of N2. So need to work with moles, need to work with moles, okay? Has to be moles. So for solids, if you've got to work with moles, chances are you might need to use this equation, moles equals grams over the GFM. And if you're working with gases, that's where the PV equals NRT, ideal gas law, comes into play, right? So here's an example. Airbags in cars are filled with nitrogen gas generated from the following balanced chemical equation seen below. If an airbag has a volume of 33 liters, how many grams of sodium azide, NaN3, would you need to start with to inflate the airbag to a pressure of 1.2 atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius? So this is the chemistry behind it, right? In airbags, there is this sodium azide solid being stored, and then when you get into a collision, it starts the chemical reaction where it's going to decompose and give off nitrogen gas. Oh. So let's let's plan this out so they're giving me some information here right they're giving me pressure they're giving me temperature they're giving me volume so i know from pv equals nrt i can figure out how many moles of nitrogen gas do i need right so first step is going to be hey moles is going to equal this pv over rt now once i have moles of n2 then I'm going to have to use the balanced chemical equation mole ratio to get me moles of NaN3. So that's going to be my second step. Now they want grams of that though. How many grams of it do we need? So that's going to be another step. We're going to need to use the GFM, the gram formula mass, to give me grams of NaN3. So let's just do it let's do this now we got our plan we figured out how we can go from one thing to the other i like getting my plan figured out before i start working with the numbers because the numbers get me all confused when i'm dealing with all these numbers so first step i know moles of n2 is going to equal the pressure which they told me is 1.20 atmospheres times the volume which they told me is 33 liters all over RT. Now R for the atmospheres is at 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over mole Kelvin times the temperature in Kelvin. It has to be in Kelvin, so it's going to be 298. All right, so 25 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives me the Kelvin temperature. So now you could do this math, write down this in between number, but I already know that this is my moles of N2, right? So this is moles of N2. So I'm just gonna move on to my second step, right? You could write down that in-between number and risk writing down the wrong number or typing in the wrong number again, but I'm just gonna move on. Now I can look at my balanced chemical equation. I'm looking for NaN3 and I'm looking at N2. It's a two to three mole ratio. So if I got my moles of N2 figured out already, I got to put my moles of N2 on the bottom. So I see it's three moles of N2 is to two moles of NaN3. Now this is going to make me cancel out the moles of N2, but I'm not going to do that yet. So now I've done my step two. I've done step one. I've done step two. My third step is the GFN. Right now I've figured out moles of NaN3. That's what I know at this point so if i'm trying to cancel out moles and i want grams i'm going to times it by the gfm of na n3 and i've already done this 
off screen some Hollywood movie magic. And I know it's 65.02 grams per mole. So 65.02 grams per one mole of NaN3. Now watch what happens. Moles of NaN3 cancel out. I'm left with grams of it. And since this over here was moles of N2, my moles of N2 cancel out. And if I look at all these units, you know, atmospheres cancels out, liters cancels out, Kelvin cancels out, and that's where I end up with just my moles. So my setup is right, so I plug and chug all of these numbers. And when I keep it to just two sig figs, because of that 33 liters only has two sig figs, I end up with a 70 grams of NaN3. So again, you could write down the numbers after each step and get you know, incrementally closer, but I like having my plan, setting it all at once, so I don't have to worry about rounding off numbers in between and losing digits and getting worse answers. So that's just me. Here's another example. So during the production of nitric acid, ammonia is reacted with oxygen in the presence of a catalyst to produce nitric oxide and water vapor represented by the following balanced chemical equation. How many liters of NH3 gas at five atmospheres and 850 Celsius are needed to react with two moles of O2. So here is the balanced chemical equation. So now let's let's think about this. They we know moles of O2. They already told us that. They told us a pressure. They told us a temperature, and they're asking for the volume. All right. Well, I know volume. I can find in my PV equals NRT. So if I rearrange it, I get volume equals NRT on P. But the problem is I don't know what my moles are right now. So how am I going to figure that out? Well, that's where I'm going to go to my balanced chemical equation. So first step is going to be to look at the balanced chemical equation. How many moles of NH3 are two moles of O2? Because that's the things we're looking for. So once we get that, we'll get moles of NH3. And then the second step is where we're going to use this volume equals NRT over P. So let's, let's take a look. I have four NH3 for every five O2. And in the problem, they're telling me, all right, well, what about if I use two moles of O2? So I'm going to put two on the side with the five. I'm going to put X on the side with the NH3. I'm going to do a little cross multiplying and dividing. I get 5x equals 8. So divide each side by 5. And I get x equals 1.6. And that is moles of NH3. So now that I have moles of NH3, I can plug it into this equation. I go, all right, well, if I'm trying to get volume, it's going to equal that 1.6 moles times my gas constant, well, let's see, they, they told me atmospheres, so let's work with the, the correct gas constant, 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles Kelvin. And I always put my units because then I can make sure that they cancel out to give me what I'm trying to solve for. All right, so that's R times the T. Now, this, again, Degrees Celsius, not what I want. I need to add 273 to it so I can get Kelvin. And when I do that, I get 1123 Kelvin. And then I divide all that by, well, that's not how you draw a straight line. Look at that, what are you gonna do? I guess that's better. <laughs> Divided by the pressure of 5.00 atmospheres. Now, when I plug and chug, the answer that I get from that when rounded to just two sig figs because of this whole 1.6 moles thing uh, really should even just be one sig fig. I end up with 30 liters as my final answer after rounding and accounting for sig figs. So hopefully not terrible stuff, you know, it's just putting more things together. So summarize, can you apply the ideal gas law equation to solve for stoichiometric analysis? I hope so. Goodbye. Okay,